just a word further on the um, on the uh, agreement that was that we will be voting on later today. Uh, in addition to the pieces on homeland security, which are very important. And by the way, the homeland security budget is a big budget. It's not just about the Mexico border. It's about ice cutters uh, in the. Uh, off of Alaska and the rest of other parts of our border that are, are not necessarily just the southern part. And, and uh, uh, I'm very pleased that some long uh, advocated for uh, pieces are now in that budget as well. So when you talk about the size of the budget, it's broader than the U.S.-Mexico border. But the bill that is we will be passing is a long overdue pay uh, uh, pay raise for federal employees to make them uh, on a par with military employees as they had always been. Uh, an additional $1 billion for the census uh, to combat uh, the administration's assault on, and to ensure a, far accu uh, a fair, accurate count. $3 billion to keep communities safe by combating the opioid epidemic and hiring more police officers. One billion, um, $17 billion to rebuild America's infrastructure, billions of dollars in support of small businesses, more than $9 mil billion, billion dollars to protect clean air, clean water, and public lands, $9.1 billion in security assistance for our allies, and $7.4 billion for global health and nutrition assistance. Uh, so this is a very important legislation. We have the six appropriations bills that were not agreed to and not, and not as controversial, and then the Homeland Security Bill, uh, which produced the result that today we will keep government open, and uh, that's very important for the American people, but we will also, as we do so, protect our borders and protect our values. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker. Yes, ma'am. The president just said that he will declare a national emergency when he signs this bill. Do you still plan to file a legal challenge if and when he does that, and how quickly would you do Did that? I ever say I was filing a legal challenge? You said Democrats. I may. Challenge. That's an option, and we'll review our options. But it's important to note that when the president declares this emergency, first of all, it's not an emergency, what's happening at the border. It's a humanitarian challenge to us. The president has tried to sell a bill of goods to America. But putting that aside, just in terms of uh, the president making an end run around Congress, here he said, let us respect what the committee will do, and then walks away from it. But in any event, um, the president is doing an end run about Congress, about the power of the purse. You've heard me say over and over again, Article I, the legislative branch, the power of the purse, the power to declare war, many other powers uh, are listed in the Constitution, and, of, of course, the responsibility to have oversight. So the president is doing an end run around that. Uh, it, it is, um, we will review our options. We'll be prepared to respond appropriately to it. I know the Republicans have some unease about it, no matter what they say, uh, because if the president can declare an emergency on something that he has created as an emergency, an, an, an illusion that he wants to convey, just think of what a president with different values can present to the American people. You want to talk about a national emergency? Let's talk about today, the one-year anniversary of another manifestation of the epidemic of gun violence in America. That's a national emergency. Why don't you declare that emergency, Mr. President? I wish you would. But a Democratic president can do that. A Democratic president can declare emergencies as well. So the precedent that the president is setting here is something that should be met with great unease and dismay by the Republicans. And of course, we will respond accordingly uh, when we review our options. First, we have to see what the president actually says.